Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to explain the forehand technique of Nick Kyrgios. Now, this video is sponsored by PlayerCourt.com. If you want to play more tennis and find people in your local area to compete against or practice with or even a coach who's close to you, use my link in the description, PlayerCourt.com slash 2MinuteTennis to get 50% off when you join. So I've had some people asking in the comments about the Nick Kyrgios forehand, so let's check it out. The first thing is to actually understand the grip that he uses. Now, contrary to popular belief, <laughs> Kyrgios does not use a full Western grip. So if we look here, we've got the panels on the racket, right? So there are eight panels, and I'm just drawing the first five. So this is panel number one, two, three, four, and five. And so what he does is he puts the base knuckle of his index finger and his heel pad, and he places both of those on the corner between panels four and five. There really is no name for the grip that he uses. He is on the corner. I'll put a little circle there. He puts both his base knuckle of his index finger and his heel pad on the corner, really between a semi-Western and full Western grip. All right, so now that we know the grip that he's using, let's look at his take back. A couple things. One, as soon as he sees the ball coming off his opponent's racket, he immediately starts turning his body to the side. So he gets everything facing off to the side, his knee, his toe, his body, right? Everything, his chest, everything's facing off to the right. But I want you to notice how close his racket head is to his head. Right, so this is what you call two heads are better than one or two-headed monster. We can see the butt cap of the racket and the tip of the racket's pointing up over those trees in the background there. So when he turns, the racket head is very close to his head. He still has his non-hitting hand on the throat of the racket, really helping him to coil that upper body and create tension when he begins uncoiling where he can really produce a lot of racket speed. When he takes it back as well, we can see this elbow. You could almost think of this like the serve. And I'm, later today, I'm actually going to make a curious uh, video on his serves. So look out for that. Put on your notification bell so you'll see that right away when I post it. But we can see how he's pushing that elbow back. Again, this is that, that extreme coil to be able to uncoil. Now, he's already let go with his non-hitting hand. And we can see that his non-hitting hand is starting to move. And what this allows him to do is start to uncoil his body into the shot. Now, as he's doing that, his hand, or sorry, I should say his arm is beginning to extend. You know, when he takes the racket back, he has a very bent elbow. We can't really see his upper arm, but he has a very bent elbow. And I'll show you this in front of the camera in a second. It's one of the things that allows his head, his racket to be so close to his head. And then as he begins to drop his racket, his arm begins to straighten a little bit, but it doesn't straighten like Fetter. If you look at Fetter, Fetter's arm straightens all the way, and then he rotates uh, with that lag. But Kyrgios keeps this arm bent, and you know I'm not a fan of telling people to have a straight arm or a bent arm. I don't mind which one you use because there are cases of pros using either. We can see at contact he has a bent arm. So if you have a bent arm, that's fine. You don't have to have a straight arm at contact, which I think so many coaches force people into this. If it's straight at contact, great. If it's bent at contact, great. As long as you have the basic building blocks of the forehand. Now, as his hand and racket start to drop, we can see that the tip of the racket is pointing off to the right, which is really a hallmark of players who use that pre-stretch forehand, to use the term that Vic Braden came up with. And this is when the racket is actually on the outside of the hand. Well, what's going to happen is as the hand goes forward, the racket's going to snap back into the inside of the hand. So this is that position position where you hear coaches, and it's true, where this idea of point the butt cap at the ball. So many players just go into this position automatically. You look at um, a Diego Schwartzman, you look at Serena, you look at uh, Del Paltro, where they don't have this big lag in their swing where the racket's on the outside of the hand and then snaps to the inside. You can try this. I personally am not someone who forces people into this. I think uh, recreational players actually struggle with this type of swing typically. So if you want to just have the racket drop, you know, more behind you like Diego Schwartzman or, uh, or Serena Williams, that is absolutely a fine way to swing and may actually be the exact way you need to swing in order to hit your best forehands. So we can see that his body is kind of cocked and loaded. We can see where his height is, right? We can see where his head is and he's popping up as he's hitting the ball. So he's absolutely lifting up as he's hitting the ball with his legs. We can see that as he's approaching the contact, he is definitely not getting very far below this ball. Now, he will drop below this ball farther if he wants to put more spin on it, but he's really going to be driving this ball. And I think, is this the one he hits for a winner? Yeah. So you'll notice 
that even though he's going to crush this ball and he's actually driving through this, notice how closed his racket is prior to contact. So he is closing the racket face. So please make sure that your strings are tilted down prior to hitting the ball. This is what allows you at contact to get your strings to face forward. Or if you're swinging really fast, you can have your racket a few degrees closed because the drag up the back of the ball does lift the ball up over the net. Now, when he's hitting the ball, this is definitely something that is different than Federer. Notice we are looking straight at the back of his head. So when he's hitting the ball, he is definitely not keeping his head still. He definitely pulls off this ball. One of the things that Federer does is, and we can't even see it here, you know, when Federer hits the ball, we can see his entire right side of his face. All we can see with Kyrgios is his ear, and that's because he's just looking over the net. So if I were Kyrgios' coach, I would absolutely be working on him to keep his body facing a little more to the right, keeping his, his head facing off to the right a little more, easier contact. And also, one of the hallmarks of the Kyrgios forehand is how he, he unwinds. But what this does with this left hand yanking back and his body facing completely the other direction is this can hurt his ability to then go forward if he hurts his opponent. It will make him later. There's, there's no doubt about it. If your body faces a tremendous amount over the other direction after you're done hitting the ball, it absolutely, as a recreational player, is going to make you slower going forward. Uh, and your weight distribution is now just going the wrong direction if you hurt your opponent. So if you do th this, you better end the point with this shot or you will be a little later going forward because when your opponent hits it, you know, and gets that ball back, they'll have enough time to get back in because you're just late coming forward and getting that ball out of the air. So, heck, I I'm going to say it. If I were Kyrgios' coach, I would absolutely be working on him not throwing this left hand all the way behind him, this non-hitting hand all the way behind him, but I actually ask him to control that left hand a little more just to not unwind so much, making him later, you know, into the, con you know, going forward if he does hurt his opponent. You'll notice that contact, and I did check out his side view. You know, he has this left hand up at contact. So many players, they think that when he's hitting the ball, that his left hand is down. But what we see is his left hand go down after he hits the ball. But when he is hitting, that left hand is up. And his left hand is higher than contact. This is one of the things that I absolutely want people to do. Let me draw a straight line across from contact. We can absolutely see that his left hand is about there. And we can use the, you know, elbow to his forearm there to notice that. So his... Uh, his left hand is higher than contact. Please make sure when you film yourself that you have your left hand higher than contact. It really makes sure that you are rotating your body. And that's actually one of the reasons why I just want people to, to finish up over their shoulders. Um, you know, everyone loves the Nadal forehand and he finishes up over the head. So you got Kyrgios who tends to finish a little lower and then you got Nadal who tends to finish a little higher. I'm a big fan of finishing more just right over the shoulder, very much like Serena. All right, let me show you what this looks like in front of the camera. Now to help me demonstrate the Nick Kyrgios Topspin Forehand, I've got the Topspin Pro here. You know what to do. Grab my affiliate link in the description below. It would mean the world to me if you used my link to get a Topspin Pro for at-home practice. So thank you so, so much. And so many of you are getting the Topspin Pro using my link. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. When you take the racket back, you, to be like Nick Kyrgios, first you got to have the grip. Now, I am not a fan of a grip that, that is this far. The grip that I like to have my students use at most is a semi-Western grip, but you wanna understand the difference between all the grips so you can really try which one is best for you and allows you to play your best tennis. So the Kyrgios grip is in between a semi-Western and a full Western grip. Now, what does that actually mean? Let's understand it from the st standpoint of where the palm is facing. If you look at let's say Federer hit a forehand. If Federer at contact has his racket straight up and down, his palm is facing the exact same direction as where the strings are pointing. That is an Eastern forehand grip. When your palm is facing the same direction as the string. So if the racket's straight up and down, your palm is straight up and down. Let's take, I don't know, let's take uh, uh, Novak Djokovic. Novak uses a semi-Western grip. This is where the palm, this is actually the same grip I use. The palm with that same racket is up at 45 degrees. So when you grab on, your palm is up at 45 degrees at contact. Same racket, you know, you can have the racket be the same at contact. It's just the palm is rotated 45 degrees from the Eastern. If we go another 45 degrees, 
Now the palm is facing directly to the sky. That is a full western grip. Just look at I don't know, a jack sock hitting a full western grip for him. So the difference isn't necessarily where the strings are pointing at contact. The difference really is where the contact is in relation to the body. So an eastern forehand is more here, where you've got a semi-western and then a western. And really the difference is a little higher too, where the contact goes eastern, semi-western, full western, where they like to make contact with the ball. And the difference is where the palm is facing. You can't just look at a racket at contact and know what grip they use. You have to kind of look at where their contact point is, but really where the palm is facing when you hit the ball. In one, and you can scroll back and see it. When Kyrgios was taking his racket back, if you stop at right about this position right here, we can see his knuckle and we can see the orientation of the racket. And you can see that it is in between panel four and five that he is using a, a, a kind of a hybrid grip, a composite that is in between a semi-western and full western. It allows him to hit a lot of spin. He absolutely can hit a ton of spin on the ball. And so the more western you go, semi-western, western, it does give you the potential to put more spin on the ball because the contact point's a little bit farther out in front and it does help you close the racket face and swinging up is kind of mandatory as you hit the ball that way. When he takes the racket back, he, hit, he takes it back with the racket very close to his body. His wrist is slightly bowed over, so wrist flexion, it is slightly bowed over, and he has this elbow up in the back. It's almost like he's elbowing someone, similar to elbow the enemy on the serve, right? Jeff Salzenstein. So when you take the racket back, work on having this elbow up. I'm a big fan of the elbow up when you take it back, and here's the reason why. You see a lot of players with huge backswings, even pros who I wish wouldn't take the racket so far back. But when you take the racket back and your elbow is up, it helps keep the racket more on the hitting side of your body. So if you're right-handed, you're hitting the ball and keeping the ball on the right side of your body. It doesn't break the plane, which would be right here. When this elbow drops, that's when the racket starts to go on the wrong side of the body. I won't say wrong, but we'll say the other side of the body, the non-hitting side of the body. There's no right or wrong way to hit a ball. There's just efficient and inefficient. So what you can think of is when you film yourself and you look at your swing, think of having your hand, your elbow, and your shoulder all the same height. When you, and that means from your hand to your elbow, that's level to the ground. Rather than having from your hand to your elbow being vertical, if your hand to your elbow is vertical, that's when your racket's gonna start going on the wrong side of the body, the inefficient side of the body. If you just raise your elbow and you push it up, so instead of your armpit being closed, you push it up and now there's a lot of space under your armpit where your armpit is exposed to someone standing behind you, that's when you can help keep the racket more on the hitting side of the body. If you're a coach, that's some valuable information there. Let that be used in your future lessons to help your students who have a very large swing. You can't just put them up against a fence and have them practice forehands without hitting the fence, right? You see that people will stand like this and they have to not hit the fence, but the coach is not addressing the problem. What they're just saying is, hey, don't hit the fence. But then when they go out and hit, their hand's still above the elbow. Get, get this level and it'll fix that. When he drops, he starts to drop. Now he does not drop all the way like Fetter. Fetter's got an Eastern, but Fetter drops and just as his arm straightens, that's when the body rotates for Fetter. Kyrgios keeps that arm bent, but he still has that lag forehand where, as Vic Braden called it a pre-stretch, the racket is on the outside of the hand. And then as he starts to rotate his body, the weight of the racket stays where it is and the body rotates pulling the arm. And when you pull the arm, that stretches the forearm and helps as a nice little power source in order to kind of get the racket back up to contact. The racket's kind of like, hey, what about me? And it actually is a nice little way to create some racket speed prior to ever hitting, hitting the ball. When Kyrgios hits the ball, and it's a big difference between his forehand and, let me get into this, when he hits the forehand compared to Federer, is Federer is looking down at contact, and Federer is like this. Federer is hitting the ball like this, where Kyrgios, obviously his arm's a little closer because the arm is bent, but he's looking up over the net. Now, I like how Kyrgios has his non-hitting hand higher than contact. You do not want your non-hitting hand below contact. You can actually look at someone hitting a forehand and, no, and just look at a picture. So somebody hands you a picture and it's someone hitting the ball at contact. You wanna know their level of play? Look at their non-hitting hand. If their non-hitting hand is higher than contact, they're a higher level player. 
If their non-hitting hand is below contact, they are a lower level player. You will be right 99% of the time. And I, that's not just like, oh, it's really 60%. No, 99, somebody hands you 100 pictures, you can ju use just that and you'll know 99%, you'll be right 99% of the time, 99 of those. And it just has to do with the non-hitting arm dropping as you hit the ball, which impedes hip turn. It's really important that you're able to rotate your hips. And when you drop this arm, it means that it drops and then you hug yourself and it impedes hip turn. So if it stays up, that means it doesn't get in the way and it allows you to rotate. So make sure at contact, what I tell people is wave to your opponent, but just make sure at contact that your non-hitting hand is higher than contact. Now, when Kyrgios is hitting the ball, he is swinging extremely fast. So he can get away with at contact, his racket face ever so slightly closed. And I'm talking less than 10 degrees. If you don't swing very fast, you'll have to have your racket straight up and down as you hit the ball. If you swing really fast, you can get away with your racket face ever so slightly closed, definitely less than 10 degrees. And the reason, because there's friction. And when you hit the ball, it'll actually bring the ball up. It pulls the ball up and drags the ball up over the net. But because you're swinging up, that puts top spin on the ball so that when you spin, the ball goes up off the racket, but the top spin pulls the ball down. The ball always curves the opposite direction you swing. So if you want the ball to curve down, you need to swing up as you're hitting the ball. Is it possible to swing up too much? Of course. And so you can swing a little more, you know, a little flatter through the ball. And with the Top Spin Pro, you can take the top shield off if you want to swing a little flatter through it to not hit the, the shield, but to go a little more through the ball and to not just always like smack into the, to the shield. The shield is great to get you to understand the upward swing, especially if you're someone who hits very flatter. But if you really wanna work on the nuances, you can go a little flatter through contact, a little more up through contact to be able to shape the ball a little differently. So that's a really cool feature about the Topspin Pro. Now, I'm a big fan of the way Dominic Team finishes his forehand when he is practicing on the practice court, you know, at a tournament, when he's just working on his game. And what he does is he catches the racket over his non-hitting hand. I'm a big fan of that. One reason is because it just makes sure that your non-hitting hand was up, right? We're talking about at contact, you want your non-hitting hand up. And so it's an easy way to make sure you're waving to your opponent when you hit the ball, just catch right after you contact. It'll force your non-hitting hand to be up. Also, it'll make sure that you don't over-rotate. You, you know, one of the things about Kyrgios is he hits that forehand and he does this. Well, that's gonna make you later going forward when you are hurting your opponent. And those little differences make a world of difference when it comes to winning a match and losing a match over four or five sets. If you get, oh, if I had only won four more points, six more points, I would have won the match. It's not helping Kyrgios. He's kind of winning in spite of this. It's not helping Kyrgios that he's finishing that way. I would much rather have somebody who finishes and catches the racket in their non-hitting hand to immediately you know, not over-rotate, hit the ball, and then be able to go forward after they hit the shot. Now, after he hits, he then drops the racket down. His left hand is actually visible on this side of his body to his opponent um, when he was hitting that, those forehands. Not a fan of that. So let me try to demonstrate the Kyrgios forehand. I've got the grip here. He had that little curl in his wrist. The racket was really close to his body, or close to his head. Two heads are better than one. Elbow was back, and then he drops. He didn't drop far below the ball. He hit. He hit the ball, and then he dropped. Ooh, it kind of hurts to. It hurts my heart. I just say not physically hurts, but it hurts my heart to even demonstrate that way because I know for a fact I would not play my best tennis hitting forehands like this. So work on your tennis game. You know, when you go out and practice, I want you to film yourself. And when you compare what you see to the pros, try to compare your basic building blocks to the pros. You know, if I'm about the same height as Diego Schwartzman, I'm a little taller than Diego. But if you were to just take an X-ray of my body and all you saw were bones, and then you took an X-ray of Diego Schwartzman and all you saw were his bones, and you put them side by side, I bet you wouldn't be able to tell who is who, right? Because we're about the same height, right? What that means is what makes us look different isn't the basic bones and structure. What makes us look different is skin and hair and muscle tone and whatever, right? No one looks at me and says, wait, is that Diego Schwartzman, right? So, and vice versa. My point here being, 
you want to get the basic bones and structure right. So if you're like, I'm gonna hit forehands like Nick Kyrgios. Okay, if what you're copying is this left hand or on the serve, if you're copying this on Kyrgios' finish on the serve, you're copying the wrong thing. That is not what makes Kyrgios' serve so good. It, it just doesn't at all. So you wanna copy the correct stuff. You know, a lot of people watch my videos and they think that I'm just for beginners. They think I've had, I've heard like, I've had phone conversations where people tell me, you know, Ryan, I've, I've been watching you for a long time and it just seems like you only teach technique that's gonna help beginners and kind of like average players, that you are not for the advanced player. Nothing could be further from the truth because what will make you better, even at the highest levels, is to get your swing to be more correct from the basic bones and structure standpoint, not the idiosyncrasies and the signatures of the swing, but actually the basic swing. So go out and film yourself. Compare the basic bones and structure of your forehand to Federer and Alcaraz and Serena and Del Potro and Agassi from 20 years ago. Compare what you're doing to them, but not from the standpoint of copying their signatures, but copying the basic building blocks of your technique. And there is no doubt, you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.